Entrepreneur, industry leader, innovator, author, inventor, researcher, teacher. These are some of the words often used when referring to Dr. Andrew Viterbi. But underlying all of these descriptions is the basic one, engineer. On his way to becoming an icon in telecommunications, Dr. Viterbi fulfilled his dream and primary goal to teach. In so doing, he left an indelible mark as a professor in the schools of engineering and applied science at the University of California in Los Angeles and San Diego. I always uh, had uh, a goal to become uh, a college professor and uh, what inspired me was uh, learning and then passing it on and in the process of learning you're also discovering new material, and that's research. It was his love of teaching his students at UCLA that drove Dr. Viterbi to create the now ubiquitous Viterbi algorithm, which is an underlying principle of telecommunications. There was a uh, technology evolving, uh, which I found rather difficult to teach. So I was looking for a more intuitive way to explain how a particular class of error correcting codes performed and uh, in so doing I devised uh, this algorithm which I consider to be just a uh, an analytical tool not a not a product today the Viterbi algorithm is used in most digital cellular phones and satellite receivers as well as in such diverse fields as magnetic recording voice recognition, and DNA sequence analysis. The original purpose was improving the, the performance, the accuracy of digital communication, of transmitting the zeros and ones. The signal gets distorted, so to pull the zeros and ones out, we have to have some aids. So that's what the algorithm was designed to do. While teaching at UCLA, Dr. Viterbi and two of his colleagues were approached by the U.S. Navy for help in improving ship-to-shore and ship-to-satellite communications. It was then that Leonard Kleinrock and Erwin Jacobs joined him in forming a consulting firm called Linkabit, concentrating mostly on satellite communications work for the U.S. Department of Defense. In due course, Linkabit was acquired by a larger company and expanded into commercial applications of satellite technology. In those days, uh, uh, dishes were still pretty big and more people could, could steal the signal. So we, we helped them encrypt the signal and that was one of the, the major products of Linkabit. In 1985, Viterbi again joined forces with Erwin Jacobs and several other colleagues to found a new company called Qualcomm which would literally revolutionize the wireless communications industry. What started the company was um, uh, a rather interesting uh, application which uh, involved uh, providing satellite communication for moving vehicles, particularly for, for the trucking industry. There was a wealth of commercial satellites that had been launched as early as the early to mid 80s so there was a lot of, uh, of uh, infrastructure lying fallow up there in the sky. Based on the experience of its founder's previous work in military communications, Qualcomm developed a spread spectrum technology for commercial applications that was ultimately approved by the Federal Communications Commission. So we built a spread spectrum system uh, for the, that uh, uh, industry and uh, and demonstrated it to the FCC and uh, they gave us a, a temporary uh, experimental license for 600 units and we showed that they were not interfering with other users and that we could operate in the presence of interference. So eventually that became a significant business. Today I think there's something like 300,000 to 500,000 trucks 
operating in North America using that so-called Omnitrack system. It was soon after that Qualcomm applied similar technology to the emerging industry of cellular telephony, and in doing so, took wireless communications into the next realm. Code Division Multiple Access, or CDMA as it has come to be known, enabled multiple users in close proximity without interference. But when first introduced, CDMA was met with much skepticism. It would take two years to convince cellular providers that CDMA was worth trying. Two standards had just been approved, one in Europe, which is called uh, GSM for Global System for Mobiles, and one in the United States based on Time Division Multiple Access, or TDMA. It wasn't until the turn of the 21st century and the advent of second-generation technology that CDMA became accepted. Today, all third-generation technologies are CDMA-oriented, and fourth-generation technology is on the threshold, also using a form of spread-spectrum technology. So the next big thing, I, I have a feeling, uh, will probably come in, the, in how all this is being applied. It's almost unlimited as long as, as creative people continue to, to contribute and, and there's a market for it. During his more than 50-year career in telecommunications, Andrew Viterbi has previously received numerous accolades and awards. Among them are eight honorary doctorates from universities in Canada, Israel, Italy, and the United States. His several IEEE awards include the Alexander Graham Bell, Claude Shannon, and IEEE RSE Wolfson James Clerk Maxwell Awards. Other awards are from the Marconi Society, NEC, and the Edward Rhine Foundation. They include the Christopher Columbus Medal, Franklin Medal, Robert Noyce Semiconductor Industry Award, and Millennium Laureate Award. He holds memberships in the National Academies of Science and Engineering and the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. He has received an honorary title from the President of Italy and the National Medal of Science from the President of the United States. With so many kudos throughout his prolific career, Dr. Viterbi still appears humbled by receiving the IEEE Gold Medal. Well, it's satisfying, but at the same time, uh, it's a little overwhelming because I never expected it. I was in the right place at the right time and, and I was inspired. Throughout my career, I always had a good time doing what I did. I enjoyed teaching, I particularly enjoyed research. I think IEEE plays an, ex an extremely important role in supporting the, the profession and the industry. And it, it bridges the gap between academia and industry nicely. IEEE is proud to present the 2010 Medal of Honor to Dr. Andrew Viterbi for seminal contributions to communications technology and theory. <laughs>